How to use a tea kettle may seem like a simple enough question, but there is way more to it than most people think. We often talk a lot about how to prepare tea, but a question we are always asked is how to heat up the water. The tea kettle is the easiest way to get the water to the right temperature, and in this video, we're going to teach you how to use it. Before we get started, it would really mean a lot to us if you could subscribe to our YouTube channel and stay tuned for future tea videos. We have hundreds of videos on all sorts of topics related to Japanese green tea, but for this episode, we're going to focus on the tea kettle specifically. Without further ado, let's get started. When it comes to how to use a tea kettle, there are a few important things to keep in mind. There's much more to a tea kettle than just a water heater. It's actually a complex piece of teaware, and it requires certain techniques to function at its best. In this video, we're not only going to be focusing on the tea kettle, but we'll also discuss how to get the water to the point where it can be used to produce the best cup of tea. There are a few different steps when it comes to how to use a tea kettle. We've broken them down according to the setup process, the boiling process, and the pouring of the tea kettle. We'll also briefly discuss how to take care of your tea kettle. First, we have the setup process. Once you have your kettle plugged in and situated in the right spot, it's time to fill it up with water. A common mistake people make is actually putting the tea leaves into the tea kettle. You want to keep the kettle completely pristine with nothing other than clean water inside. Furthermore, you'll actually want to use filtered water inside the tea kettle if you can. Even if your tap water is meant to be good drinking water, it can still contain a lot of calcium. This will not only interfere with the taste of the tea, but it will also build up a hard residue in your tea kettle and make the cleanup more difficult. When it comes to the quantity of water used in the kettle, we would recommend you go for three times the amount you need for a pot of tea. Japanese green tea is made with 150 milliliters of water, so you'll want 450 milliliters of water in total. We'll explain why in the next section. The boiling process. There are two real types of electric kettles out there. The first is a type with just a single on-off switch, and the second allows you to set a specific temperature if you want. If you have the second option, follow the specific brewing parameters for each tea on our website, select the right temperature, and start heating. If you have the type of kettle that simply has an on-off switch with no temperature controls, you can simply switch it on and start heating the water. Be sure to cut the temperature off the moment you start seeing tiny bubbles forming, especially if you're preparing green tea. If you wait until the water is at a full rolling boil, it will be too hot and you'll extract a lot of bitterness from the leaves. It may also help to use a kitchen thermometer so you can cut the tea off at the exact temperature. If you don't have access to any of these temperature controls or even a tea thermometer, one thing that you can do is this technique we learned at a tea shop in Tokyo. By transferring boiling water into a series of cups, each cup will cool off the water by about 10 degrees Celsius. If you're using 60 degrees Celsius water and the water is boiling, you can transfer it into four different cups before you use it in your tea. This will bring the temperature down to roughly 60 degrees Celsius, which is the perfect temperature for a lot of different types of Japanese green tea. Once the water has reached the correct temperature, it's time to pour it into your teaware. Before adding the tea leaves into your teapot, pour a tiny bit of hot water in and let it heat up the teapot as you select your tea. Then pour out the water and add in 5 grams of leaves. When you pour the water in on top of the tea leaves, make sure to do it along the sides of the leaves if you can. When you pour it directly onto the leaves, it can agitate them and extract more of their bitterness. Once you've added 150 milliliters of water into the teapot, you can stop pouring. Put the lid on and let the tea leaves brew undisturbed for one minute. After the minute is up, you can pour out the tea and the built-in strainer inside the teapot will automatically sift out the leaves so they don't end up in your cup. The reason we recommend using a larger volume of water in the kettle is because you will likely want to brew the tea leaves multiple times. The higher the volume of water, the longer it will retain heat. After you finish your first brew of tea, you will want to prepare a second one right away so it helps to have this water at the same temperature. For the second and third brewing of the tea, you only need 20 seconds because the tea leaves have already been fully opened up. Finally, let's talk about how to take care of your tea kettle. Learning how to brew tea isn't the only part of learning how to use a tea kettle. You also need to learn how to take care of it. As we mentioned before, it's really important to keep your tea kettle pristine. This means trying to keep the tea leaves and calcium out, but it also means to avoid using soap inside. As long as you're not putting anything inside the tea kettle other than water, you shouldn't need more than a damp paper towel to clean it. How to use a tea kettle on the stove. Before we show you how to use a tea kettle on the stove, there is one very important thing you need to know, and that is that there are two main ways to heat water for tea. The first is the electric water heater, which we devoted the last section to, and the second is the stove top water heater. The electric water heater should never be placed on the stove. They often have a plastic or soft bottom to them, and they have not been heat proofed. If your kettle is meant to be used on the stove, it should have a flat, heat proof metal bottom to it. There are some teapots like the Tetsubin or cast iron teapot that are meant to be heated on the stove directly, and others that are not. The Kyusu teapot, for example, is made out of clay, and it should not be used directly on the stove. It's meant to be used as a container for brewing tea, not heating the water itself. The clay in the teapot is meant to produce the best tasting tea, concentrating the flavor into a small space and accentuating some of the richer tasting notes. 
If you're interested in trying this teapot for yourself, you can get one for free when you sign up for the monthly tea club. When using a stovetop kettle, it can take more time to heat up the water, but if you're not careful, it can hit a rolling boil before you even notice. Make sure you keep a close eye on the water and test the heat the moment it starts to look like it's getting hot, as this already might be enough to brew Japanese green tea. While the whistling tea kettle has become famous from movies and TV, a lot of stovetop water heaters do not whistle. This whistling is triggered by boiling water escaping a narrow opening in the spout of the teapot, and it's usually used as an alarm bell to let the user know that the water is ready. The problem with this is that boiling water is too hot for most teas, so you'll actually want to keep an eye on your water and cut off the heat before it boils, even if you do have a whistling kettle. I hope you have found this guide helpful when it comes to how to use a tea kettle. If you still have questions about how to use a tea kettle, or how to prepare tea in general, feel free to leave a comment or ask us directly and we will answer you as soon as we can. As you can see, there is still a lot more to how to use a tea kettle than most people think, and it can take quite a bit of practice before you get used to it. Thank you all so much for taking the time to watch this video. If you'd like to support our YouTube channel, a great way to do that would be signing up for the Monthly Tea Club. With the Monthly Tea Club, not only do you get great Japanese green tea delivered to you every month at a 16% discount, we'll also send you a free Kyusu teapot your first month. This is a great way to get started in your journey into Japanese green tea, and it would really help support us in our mission of bringing quality, organically grown Japanese green tea to people all around the world. Thank you all so much for watching, and we'll see you next time.